Thank you. So I'm Brian Johnson. This is Jesse Brandenburg. And we're from Intel at the Intel Ethernet um, the networking division. Um, and we're going to cover our 800 series product and some of the new technologies as we get close, closer to launching this thing. So this is all the legal stuff. Always have to show that slide. And so I want to start with our, our, the evolution of the Intel Ethernet architecture. Uh, a lot of people will know the 500 series, uh, also the 82599 or the X520 adapter, uh, that was previously codenamed was Niantic. That 10 gig adapter and controller is everywhere. Um, it was the first thing that we offered with, with um, uh, extensive SRLV and VMDQ support for virtualization, because that was really what was coming up um, at the time. But it was really it, a, a hardware ASIC. I mean, it was a very little um, additional programming that you could do to it um, outside of just what we could do with the drivers. Anytime we needed to make a change to it, add functionality, it would have to be a silicon spin. We moved to the 700 series, codename on the primary controller on that was Fortville. And when we introduced that, we provided some additional programming. So we put in firmware, which allowed us to add additional capabilities at, over the time and the life of the product. And we're still adding functionality to that product. So one of the things that we added was this partially programmable pipeline, and we introduced a technology called dynamic device personalization, which allows us to essentially surgically input or ins insert additional protocol definitions into the pipeline that allows us to then take advantage of th those definitions throughout the pipeline, and I'll go through that in a couple minutes. We're introducing the 800 series, and the code name of the main, main controller is Columbiaville. Adding additional capability with uh, DDP and the fully programmable pipeline. Additional uh, capabilities like advan um, application device queues, which will allow us to route traffic directly into uh, applications. And I'll go over both those technologies in more detail and bring in additional RDMA support, not only iWarp, but Rocky V2. And last week at the Storage Developer Conference, we demonstrated our MVME over Fabric with both uh, MVME over R uh, RDMA and MVME over TCP. So wide range of new technologies. And this is just a, a small subset of some of the new technologies that we're going to have with Columbiaville or the 800 series. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start off with just kind of level setting on what, what we refer to as a, a programmable pipeline and what kind of uh, capabilities we have with that. So our receive pipeline has several different stages, each kind of building on each other. But the primary, the first one, is the packet uh, parser. When a packet comes in, it has to go through and be analyzed, creates what's called a field vector, and fills out, uh, fills out this table. The rest of the stages then use that information for switching uh, 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 where, to, where to direct it in the switch, ACLs, the access control list, and then how to filter it out, either sending it through flow director or up through RSS through the receive side scaling. So each one of these stages, as I said, kind of build on each other. And I'll go through um, the first couple stages here. So a packet parser, a parse graph, is basically a decision tree. As, it, as the packet is, uh, the header is analyzed, each one of those pieces then gets filled into what, what I refer to as the field vector. These are the MAC address. Goes and says, okay, what's the next protocol that I expect? Goes down that list, says, oh, here's VLAN. 
And you can see on the, I guess I'll use this, on this side, VLAN goes down, hits UDP, and in this case, if it was a GTP packet, there isn't a definition for that. At that point, the parse graph says, the rest of it must be payload. That's as much information as we know about that packet because that definition isn't in the default parse graph. Now, with an enhanced profile that has a GTP or protocol defined, it hits that next protocol, says, hey, I know what that is, that's GTP, then completes and fills out the rest of the, uh, the field vector with the additional information. So without these definitions, without the protocol definitions, we still pass the packet. It's, you, the next stages just don't have as much information to deal with, okay? So this isn't just for, you know, in the, in the, the example here is with GTP, which is primarily a comms protocol, but it can be any protocol, uh, MPLS or, or what have you. If it's not in that list, then it just gets marked as payload and, and um, passed on. So what are, you, what, are you, what are you actually doing with that? You may be getting into that now. Yeah. But like, so GTP, you know, I'm an LTE carrier and I'm yep. using GTP because I want to do, you know, L2 extension over LTE. What do you actually do with that? What is the packet parser able to do with that once it identifies that? Yeah, so up here is an example of a field vector. So you'll see the MAC address, uh, what is a destination source, and it fills in this information. Basically, this is the, the, what the parse graph decisions, you know, what's in, in the um, next protocol. So it identifies this, starts filling that information in, and it can put that into the field vector, also into the receive descriptor for the application to have some additional information about whatever we want to put in. Um, but also it feeds the next stages of the, uh, the pipeline. So one, we can hand it up through the application, but also we can then direct that traffic into specific queues. Uh, I, and, and because we understand more and we can fill out more, then we can do more with that packet at the hardware layer. So does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Or, so moving to the next level, so the switch. So once we get that information into the field vector, then what can we do with it? Well, we can direct that traffic into, or we can match those field vector um, fields, these keys, in, and then take action on it. And we can stack these rules. So we have these five word rules. You can stack them and, or chain them together so you can have multiple different rules or recipes and then come out with an action. Okay, so each one of these, they match, then you can take that, that action or default action of drop it or forward it on, whatever the, that default is. Okay, so this is the first step of what we can do. And so an example on that is if you want, you know, source Mac, <coughs> destination Mac, and you can see the, the different fields up here, you want all those to match a specific criteria, then take an action. And I'll go through what the actions are here. But, and so um, you, you can do multiple actions. So you can extract this. You can put this into um, the receive descriptor as well. So you can hand that information up into the, um, to the application. So then single, dual, and quad actions. So you can do a wide variety of actions of sending it to a VSI, basically a switch or a um, virtual station interface, um, one of our, um, like a virtual function or um, a queue set, queue region, and you can see those here mirroring and so forth. This is a single pass process? Is parallel? Sort of, yes. I mean, ba in, in this case, it would be. Um, and then, in this example here, so now we have our GTP and we want to separate out UDP and TCP um, packets into different queue sets, so queue regions. So this region of 12 through 15 would be just TCP, IPv6, TCP packets coming in. And so you can start separating out the traffic. You can provide additional resources to certain packet types um, or protocols and so forth on on this 
or from, you know, if you want to get down to uh, source or Mac, you know, whatever different um, keys you want to use to drive the traffic into these different queues in this, in this scenario. So starting out, making sure that we have the definitions that we need into the parse graph as first step, because without that, we, we have limited capability to get to this level. Um, and then we take advantage of the switch and the following rules um, to drive the traffic into the different areas. So that's high level of the pipeline and what are the stages and what, what we can sort of do with it. Uh, any questions? Okay. So uh, application device queues. I talk, we talked about this back in April. And I, I know Brian was, was here at, at that show. And um, wanted to spend just a little bit more time and give an update on where we are with that. And for those that haven't seen what ADQ is, uh, give that introduction as well. So application device queues allows us to use the switch filters and the rules to drive traffic for a specific application into a defined set of queues on uh, the controller and then to um, uh, match the um, threads of execution of that application to that queue set. What that allows us to do is that application only is seeing those uh, packets that are destined for that application. You don't have anything else coming into those queues because it can't make it through the filter. So there's some optimizations and, and things that you can do that, uh, that we'll talk about, um, with Jesse will talk about and, and Paul from Aerospike here shortly. We can also control the bandwidth of the TX on those, of the transmit on those applications as well. So not only can we adjust the number of receive queues that are part of that queue set, but we can also limit um, or provide minimums of the bandwidth for that specific application. So with multiple applications on a system, you can set up these, these uh, queue sets, provide the amount of bandwidth, the amount of resources you want on the receive, how, the amount of bandwidth you want to be able to transmit out, and do some quality of service for multiple applications on the same server, or multiple aspects of the same application on the server as well. This increases the predictability of the latency in, of the application, or and reduces the latency of the application, and may and usually does improve the throughput of the application as well. Sometimes ap the throughput isn't the issue, it's the predictability in the, of the latency of the uh, response times within that application, especially as you scale out with a number uh, in a cluster of servers. And that's really uh, where we're starting to target this. So with that ADQ, all the queues, RSS, whatever, directs traffic into any of the queues that it has access to. With ADQ, you can set up the traffic to go into express lanes and dedicated routes um, and control the, the speed of those individual areas. 